Search engine optimization for WordPress is pretty similar to search engine optimization for other websites, but there's a few unique things that WordPress has, and I'm going to go over it with you here. So the first thing that you want to do is do some keyword research and find some keywords that you want to be ranking for on your site. And I don't have time to go through that here, but um, you can go to Google's keyword tool and get ideas for what people are searching for. And you want to grab maybe one or two keywords for the main pages of your site that you can try to optimize for. And once you do that, you want to log into your WordPress admin area. And in my case, I'm using the FitPro theme, but if you have a theme that does not have SEO settings, what you want to do is go to your plugins and click on Add New and search for the All-in-One SEO Pack. So you want to just search, go ahead and search for All-in-One SEO and install and activate that plugin and you will have SEO settings. In our case, we already have SEO settings with our theme and you just want to make sure that those are turned on, which they are by default. So the next thing that you want to do is go to one of your pages that you want to optimize for. And if you have your keywords handy, it's going to be pretty easy. In our case, since this is Fit Pro, I'm just going to say we're going to try to search for um, fitness program for women. Okay. So the most important place that you want to put these keywords are in your the site title you have here. And you don't want to say something like, you know, welcome to my website or anything like that. You want to make sure that your title is clear and descriptive and it has the keywords that you're looking for in there. And make sure that your number one goal is to make your site easy to use for your human visitors. And don't just make your site stuffed with keywords for Google because even if you get a bunch of traffic from Google no one is going to buy anything from you because your site will look like it was made for robots and not for people. So keep that in mind. So what we want to do is take our keyword here and you want to also include that keyword in different areas of your site. For instance your uh, headers. So we have our fitness training program will get you fit fast. It, for instance you have repetitions of fitness training program. Let's say we're just going to go for fitness training program. So we have fitness training program here and you know we can say this is the the best fitness program for women in the county. You know things like that. You can just sort of use these keywords in different variations on um, in your titles and on your page text and try to make it sound natural don't go overboard with it but you definitely want to have it in um, towards the top of the page here and in your title here and the next place is going to be in your SEO settings you want to put that in your page title and where that goes is in the actual uh, meta descriptions in the code of the page and it's the title tag and this is a really important one for Google and the other search engines. They really look at this one and give it a lot of weight. So um, keep in mind that these will appear in the search results. Your page title is actually the blue link that you click on in the search results. So make sure that it is clear and descriptive and has those keywords that you're looking for in there. Um, and you don't want to make it too long. You see how this one has the ellipsis right here and it sort of cuts it off. So you don't want to stuff it too full of keywords or else people aren't going to see the entire thing. But what you can do is put a pipe and then put your brand name here. And uh, some of the settings will do this automatically for you um, if you don't put anything in there. But we can also add, if you have room, you can add a little bit more. Say if you want to optimize for two keywords on this page, you know, you can put um, women's or, you know, workout for women, something like that. You don't want to use too many repetitions of the word women because it's already in there, but um, you get the idea. Now, the content description is this black text right here in the search results, and Google will automatically pull a description from your site if you don't put anything there for them but it's better to control what what you want to display in the search results instead of letting Google choose for you. So in the content description, 
Um, don't worry about putting a whole lot of keywords here. This is more just something enticing for your readers to, um, to click through. Yeah, this wants to be this. This needs to be more kind of uh, you know selling your page to people to make make them click through instead of just stuffing keywords there. Uh, now the next one is the SEO keywords tag, and this is actually the meta keywords tag, which is again in the code of the page. And you can put keywords here, um, comma separated stuff like that. Uh, don't worry too much about it because Google actually does not use this tag at all. They don't even look at it. So some of the lesser search engines use it to a certain extent. It's, it's good to have it there. It's not going to hurt, but it's not going to help a whole lot. So um, don't worry too much about this one. Okay, so you want to make sure that you've done this for your main landing pages and most of the SEO settings, such as the FitPro SEO settings, will automatically do the title tag for you. If you don't put anything, um, it would be a lot of work to do this for every single blog post and every single page. Um, it would be good to do it, but if you don't, just uh, know that th this will be automatically done for you. And, but on your main landing pages, like your home page, your about page, your um, products page, you know, you want to actually put the time in to do some keyword research and make sure the right things are in there. And the uh, then you want to make sure you save your settings by clicking the blue update or publish button. And the next thing is to go to the settings and permalinks. And I've gone over this in other videos, but just to make sure you have it, and you want to make sure that your permalinks are on custom structure, put a forward slash, a percentage sign, and then the word post name and another percentage sign. Okay, you can pause the video here and put that in if you need to. But that's basically gonna make your pages named for the uh, title of the post. So go ahead and save those changes. If we go back to our fitness training program for women, um, you would see that the title of the page, it has the URL of your site, and then it actually would have um, that's the old name, sorry. It would have fitness training program for women. It would automatically do this. I'm just changing the name. Um, that would be the name of the site, of the page, instead of the, uh, the default one, which is, has a question mark and a page ID number on it. So this is a better way for Google to see, actually use the keywords to see what your page is about. So if you have keywords in the page name, the page title, on the page itself and then in the SEO settings which add it to the tags then you will be pretty much good to go and that is um, just a crash course on SEO but uh, just, that's a good start for you so go ahead and do that on your website and I will see you in the next video